I'd like to speak to your manager. I'd like to speak to your mother. Oh, uh, retail. Or as I like to call it, NPC Simulator 3000. AKA legal torture for young adults and preteens with zero experience. Speaking as a past employee of Walgreens, Pizza Hut, and some other places, there's nothing quite like it. So let's start with my first job at Walgreens. Or Happy Harry's, if you're over the age of 50 and refuse to move on asking me every single day, no Brenda, we don't have milkshakes anymore, there is no whites only bathroom, please get out. While I'm on the floor working for my life with the world's largest to-do list, my manager Carrie is having a blast playing the real-life equivalent of FNAF, but she has unlimited power to keep the doors locked until her shift ends at 6am. I swear, as soon as I'm trying to do something important, customers activate like Emmys and will hunt me down only to ask the world's dumbest question. But I don't want to be all negative, there are some genuine good moments in retail. In the Walgreens I used to work at, I was known as the photo guy. For context, I was studying photography in high school and knew a lot about how to take good photos. And, you know, stuff like rule of thirds, color balance, etc. So at work, I had a blast helping customers to get good photos, and people would come to the store just for me. I legit had people coming in the store saying, Hey, is Tay here? We would like to get our photos done. And my manager would be like, Well, I could do it for you. And they would be like, No thanks, we like him because he does it right. And boy, let me tell you, she was mad. And we didn't do regular photos, mind you. We also did canvas prints and banners too. So if you had someone in the back who just didn't care about your orders, you'd get some jank mess like this. One of my favorite experiences was one day I was helping an older lady restore a photo of her late husband. For clarification, she was 94 years old and the sweetest woman I had ever seen. She pulled out a tiny photo, about half the size of a credit card, and she said she's held on to it for over 50 years. But due to her poor eyesight, the photo was too small for her to see, and she liked to carry it wherever she went. So, about after two hours of using the Photolab's caveman version of Photoshop, I got a pretty good result and showed it off to her. And let me tell you, she was so happy. Not only did she cry, but she actually asked to speak to my managers and told them to give me a raise. I, if only it worked like that. <laughs> a few days later, she actually wrote a letter to the store, to me specifically, showing her gratitude for my help. And after that, the rest was history. Needless to say, my manager didn't like how customers would only come to me, or how they would wait for my shift to start to start ordering photos. So, what did she do? Yep, I was moved to the floor, moving pallets and putting away groceries. Whenever I went in to check the schedule, I never had photo department again. And it was sad as I watched more lazy co-workers act like Squidward and ruin everyone's photos. Eventually I got moved to the one position everyone hates. The cash register. Let me tell you, being an NPC for 8 plus hours a day is no fun. Normally I care about people in their daily lives, but when you have a line reaching into the adult diapers aisle and a lady who decided it was a good idea to forget her purse and hand me a damp $10 bill from her bra, you know it's gonna be a long day. Oh yeah, when working at the register, we would have these buttons we could press that announces codes, but if you have half a brain cell, you should know the codes stand for something. The most popular was the IC3 alarm. It basically meant that the main cashier was getting their butt flooded and they needed backup. Unfortunately, backup would never come, and after spamming the button like 10 times, some dude who was probably asleep in the back finally decided to help out. One thing Walgreens did that became pretty well known is the Red Nose Day event. We still had to sell these noses, and our managers would get on us if we weren't selling any. So that meant asking every customer, would you like a red nose for Red Nose Day? A majority said no, but I did my best to be the star employee and sincere service with a smile. One day while trying to sell a nose to a customer, the dude got mad at me and started ranting about why we're supporting forced child labor by selling things made from China. Then he proceeds to purchase a toy that was probably made in China 
and left the store somehow thinking his dumber standard was valid? I don't want to spend all day talking about the kinds of customers I meant, so here's a speed course of some of the more wacky or bad ones. There was a man who cut off half his thumb and was bleeding all over my counter, and when I recommended the ER, he said it was just a scratch, and proceeded to hand me a bloody $10 bill. Then again, knowing the healthcare system, I wouldn't blame him. This other time, two guys tried to use a fake ID to buy cigarettes, and then dropped a bag of drugs when they ran out. Real fun! White powdery stuff inside. Of course, I called my manager, and let the police handle the situation, but nevertheless, fun to see that kind of stuff. Also, can't forget, our store was robbed on Christmas Eve a couple years ago. Well, two robbers went to pharmacy, and instead of going after the register, which I thought they would have done, they actually stuck up the people in pharmacy and just stole a bunch of drugs back there. I think one of the funnest things that will test your patience is the many extreme couponers. Uh, but this one I had was especially bad. Uh, not only did she come up to the register uh, with an attitude, she had a wad of mismatched expired coupons, and she expected me to magically make the price go down. And after spending about 15 minutes flattening out all the coupons, scanning them, checking what worked and what didn't work, she got mad I couldn't take more off the price and left the store with a cart overflowing with shampoo bottles at the register that I had to put away. When working in retail, you tend to know who your regulars are, and I was pretty familiar with all the homeless or struggling families in the area. And while management said helping customers with coupons was a waste of time and unallowed, I made sure to help abuse the system as much as possible. So if I'm going to be a tool for capitalism, you best believe I'm going to help anyone I can. One last experience I want to mention that made my job worth working was this really cool homeless guy named Joe. He was really big with a long beard and being self-aware he called himself Santa's half-brother. Every Friday he would come into the store and buy his signature snack, which was an entire box of Reese's Fast Break Bars. He was such a happy man and just cruising around the store offering people a bar or two before leaving with a great big goodbye. Since he tend to pay with quarters, I made sure to have extra coupons just for him whenever possible and tried to point him to just deals around the city where he could just find good food. So like I said guys, I could easily go on and on about my work experience in retail, but to keep things simple, I'll end it off here. You know, thanks for watching. If you happen to work retail, feel free to let me know what your work was like and how you're doing. Regardless, I'm happy to say I've moved on, I am currently a bus driver, and maybe another day I'll talk about some of my other work experiences. Buh bye bye